we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and so this is uh, Intro to Mobile Development. Uh, I'm Randy Vallis. And I'm uh, going to reference this, these slides here. This is on this uh, GitHub page. And I also have a project. We're going to try to build a, an app. I'll talk about the app um, in a minute. Um, I'm going to start off with the basic tooling that is needed to build an app. Um, I'll try to get everyone set up uh, to build an app. Uh, sometimes this can be kind of tricky, but um, hopefully not. Um, I'll talk about basic components of an app. Um, we're going to, I'm going to really keep it simple and, and just focus on the minimum components that I think are necessary to build a reasonably um, you know, functioning app. And then we're going to try to build one. Um, so the, the tooling, um, most of the information that you will ever want to know, um, and I, to back up, I, I'm focusing on Android. So um, most of the information is on the developer site, which I believe I have open. Um, so here is our, our developer site. Um, the uh, most important tool is Android Studio, which is linked to here. Um, so if you haven't already installed Android Studio and you want to build an app, you should install Android Studio. Um, it looks like the most recent version is 4.1.1. Um, I'm going to be using a, a slightly older version, 4.0. Uh, so hopefully it's not much different than a version that you would download. Uh, it should um, give you some options. If you're Windows, obviously you would install Windows. Um, and there's uh, Mac. Oh, wow, there is a Chrome OS version now. That's pretty cool. So if you have a Chromebook, you can install one too. Um, so after you install that, you can open it. Um, <clears throat> if you, uh, you open it, yours might look a little different than mine. I have a, a theme on mine, um, but um, what I have is a project that we are going to build. And um, that project is linked on my GitHub, uh, this rvalis dash uh, Towson. Um, it's going to be like a, a hacker news list um, app. So um, we will, uh, if you want to join in, you, you don't have to follow along, but if you wanted to, you can clone this at uh, this app and open it up in Android Studio. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I think you can clone it directly in Android Studio, but I'm going to just open up a, a terminal. And I'll navigate to a directory. And then you should be able to just clone it. If you don't already have Git, you'd have to install Git. Um, but then you can just clone it using that command there. There we go. I'll paste that into the chat. So that's if you wanted to follow along. And so that should leave you with this uh, HNews uh, folder. And so if you open up Android Studio, um, it, it'll give you an option to open up a project. So I just cloned that to this hackathon uh, folder. So there it is. And uh, it should show up with this little 
green Android icon next to it, indicating that it recognizes it as an Android app. And so we can open that. So I'll just open that one. Okay. And it'll take a little bit of time here, um, but it uh, looks like it opened up my README, which is good. Um, so the, the default branch that I'm on doesn't have anything besides the basic app structure, which I'll, I'll cover in a minute. Um, but we're going to be using the Hacker News API, hopefully, to fetch some data from it um, and display it. Um, so before we do that, though, if you are able to get Android Studio installed and then uh, open up this project, then you're you're well on your way to um, building a, an Android app. Um, so in order to run this app, we need to have an emulator installed. So if you have a, a physical device, you could um, plug that into your, your PC. Um, but uh, if you want to um, develop for Android and you don't have an Android device, uh, you can um, create an emulator. So if we open up that link, um, here's the uh, instructions on how to do that. Um, it, it says in Android Studio, we'll um, go to the Tools menu and open up the AVD Manager, uh, Android Virtual Device Manager. And we'll, we'll create one. And I'll go ahead and walk through that and create it right now. So if we go to the tools menu, AVD manager is right here at the top. It will open up this uh, device manager. Now I have four emulators uh, created on my machine here. Um, you will most likely have zero, so you would go and create a new one. Um, you can choose an existing uh, device to emulate. Um, it looks like the default is the Pixel 2. Um, this doesn't really matter, except some of these options are tablets. So, um, oh yeah, so there, you can select different categories of, of items. So we'll just uh, stick with a phone. Um, we'll select uh, the Pixel 2. Um, and then the next step is uh, to download a system image. Um, there's a, a few options here, um, but we'll just go ahead and download the um, most recent release, which is this Android 10 plus, uh, which is running Android R uh, version 30. Um, so you can click this download button and what it's going to do is it's going to download that. Now, if we uh, select x86 images, this will give you a little bit more detail on what you're going to download. Now, I already have one downloaded, um, but you can download other ones. Um, the important part to look at here is uh, whether you want Google Play services or just the Google APIs or just vanilla Android. So uh, in the class I teach, the uh, my recommendation is the vanilla Android, um, but this doesn't have any Google apps. So it doesn't have the Chrome browser. It doesn't have um, you know, Gmail or the, the Play Store. So you can't install anything, but this allows you to install and get access to the root file system, which we're not gonna deal with today. So you can just install Google Play services, um, targeting whatever machine uh, you have. Um, I have a 64-bit machine, so we'll, we'll select that. Um, after you download it, which might take some time, uh, you can then select it here. And you would click Next. You can give it a name. And then um, you can, I, I usually deselect the device frame, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, this, uh, this is the last menu item, and then you'd click Finish. I'm, I'm not going to click Finish. I already have enough emulators as is, uh, but that's how you would create an emulator. 
I'm going to be running everything on my Pixel 2 API 30, which is the one with Google Play. The only reason I'm doing this is so that when we click links in the app, it opens in um, Google Chrome. So you can start it directly from here using this actions menu over here. Uh, the play button will launch the emulator. So I'll click that and launch it. Um, your initial uh, launch will uh, take much longer because it has to boot up the machine. Uh, but this is what it should look like. And, and you can see I do have the Google Play Store and Google Chrome installed. Um, and in addition to that, um, what I'll do is I'm, I'm going to launch the finished app. And I'm going to run it. And I'll show you what we're going to build. And then we'll talk about the pieces of an Android app. And then we'll build the app. Um, I'll sort of walk through the various pieces as we as we build it. So right now it's actually um, compiling. Uh, it uses a, a tool called Gradle. If you've ever used Gradle for a Java app, um, but here we go. This is our app. Um, it's just the top twenty stories from Hacker News. And you can um, click on a link. And it should open in Google Chrome. Sure enough, it does. And um, if you chose the non-Google Play API version of the emulator, it'll open in a generic uh, browser. So this, is, this is what we're going to do. So that's the uh, finished app. Let's take a look at the, the pieces here. Um, so basically what we would typically do if we wanted to build a, a simple app, uh, we've got to create some sort of user interface. So I've got a very simple interface of just a, a list, which can be kind of complicated, but I've, I've got most of the code here to make it kind of simple. Um, we'll typically write some code to handle any events. So the button click or the link click, um, I'm handling uh, using some code. Um, and then we use the Android Studio, which uses Gradle in the back end uh, to build it. And then um, you can install it on your emulator and, and run it. That's uh, the basic flow. So that's what we'll do uh, to build our app. Um, so I, I want to walk through the, the basics of an Android app. Um, these, I tried to narrow it down to the most um, fundamental pieces that you would need to know if you wanted to build an app that works. Um, so most basic level uh, component that we want is the activity. Um, you can think of it as just one screen. So whenever you see a screen, um, there is an activity on that screen. Um, when you first create an application, um, Android Studio is going to lay down one, uh, one activity called main activity. And that's the one that we're going to use. We only have one activity in our app. Um, so I'm going to jump back to my master branch. And um, what, if you just clone the app, then you will see um, in the Java folder in the first package, there is main activity. And this is what it looks like. Uh, so it is just a, a basic class. And so um, most of your code is going to go here um, if, if, you, if we have any code. Um, and then we're going to load the UI and display it inside this activity. So if you want more information about how activities work, um, the, uh, the link here is the, the word activity. Um, and then this is also where you would hook up uh, various event handlers if you wanted to. And um, uh, so that's also what we'll be doing in our activity. Um, the other basic uh, piece, this is very fundamental to uh, Android apps, would be these intents. 
um, this is how we are going to launch the Android web browser or the Chrome web browser from within our app. Um, it's basically a mechanism to start other apps. You can also send and receive data. Um, we're actually going to send some data. The data will be the link, um, the URL that we want to open in the browser. The browser is going to take a look at that and uh, load up that link. Um, and if you want to know more about Intense, um, uh, here's, here's the link. Um, I, I will point out um, the, uh, this Intense link that I've provided here um, goes through a, a bunch of uh, you know, background information about Intense. But um, there's another um, page with a list of common Intents. So these are really helpful for um, just sort of basic uh, recipes for doing certain things on the device. So like here, there's, well, they list them all, all on the, uh, the right-hand side here. Um, so you can open up the, the camera, take a picture of it using an intent, and um, basically, yeah, here we've got some sample code. Um, you, know, you can look at the contacts, you can send an email. All of this is done through these intents, and this documentation tells you how to actually do it. So that's really helpful. Um, we'll need to load up some resources. So Android has this, uh, a list of resources that you can include in an app. These are all in this resource directory. Uh, if we look in the project, uh, they would be located in this res directory. So the, the two most important directories would be Java and res. And within the res directory, we've got various icons. Um, we've got various values, like color values. If you want to change the color of your app, you just do it here. Um, these are all defined in XML. So um, you can uh, change the color scheme of your app. Um, and um, Let's, let's give it a try. Uh, we'll change it to maybe an orange color. And if we uh, reload our app um, by clicking the uh, run button up here, uh, this should load up with those new colors. Hopefully, oops, my manifest. Uh, yeah, I changed to my uh, manifest. So, um, there's, a, there's two ways to restart your app after you've started it. There's like a quick way to reload things, um, which is control F10. Um, and then there's a full restart, with it, which is control F5. Um, sometimes you'll find the control F10 fails because too much change in your app. Uh, so you got to do a re full restart. Oh, there we go. So got an orange color now. We'll keep it orange. That seems kind of kind of a nice color. These, these the, now my color scheme is kind of messed up though, orange, blue, and teal, but that's okay. Um, so that's the uh, the resource directory. There's uh, there's uh, strings in here. So the app name is actually in the strings XML file. So if you wanted to change the, um, the app name, you can change it here. Um, so this will show up in the title bar. There we go. So change the color, change the uh, the title and name of the app. Um, but then the, uh, the most important folder would be our layout folder, which is in um, activity main. Uh, this is how we define and declare layouts in an Android app. Um, so the default app comes with a, a constraint layout, which is a way to lay out uh, various UI, UI elements. Um, and that comes with a basic text view. That's what we can see on the screen here. This hello world is our text view. And um, in Android Studio, if you open up a layout file, you can then um, select different views for those layouts um, by doing a, a split view uh, or a code view or a design view. Um, generally, the design view is pretty easy to work with. You can just drag uh, various elements onto the screen, like a button. Um, the default view for your app is uh, this constraint view, which can be a little tricky to, um, to work with actually at first. So I'm actually not going to use it. 
you got to set all these constraints. If you forget some of the constraints, then the uh, the UI element um, doesn't really show up where you would expect it to show up. So here I had to set um, constraints just by grabbing these um, handles on, on the sides. Um, now I should see my button. Uh, oh, I can see my button. I gotta run it again. Yeah, so there's my button. And um, so now it doesn't do anything. If I, uh, if I click this button, um, this is just going to declare the view. And what we would want to do at this point would be to uh, actually attach some sort of event handler uh, to it so that we can run some code when that button is pressed. Um, so uh, the way that we would do that is twofold. We first need to give this button an ID so that we can reference it in code. So um, Android Studio is going to uh, apply a default ID to it. Um, you can look at this in the XML code part of it. So this is the button I just dragged onto the screen. Um, here's the text. And these are all defined in uh, these XML attributes. But here's the ID. And it just gives us a default ID of button. And if I dragged another button, it would be button two, button three. These aren't great names, but um, you can always change it uh, here in the design view with these attributes. So um, we'll just change the name of it. I'll change it to the button. And this is important because uh, you're going to reference this in code. So if I wanted to handle that click, um, what I would do is now I'm going to jump back to main activity. And the important parts here in main activity are um, is line nine. Um, I'm not going to get into what on create is, but it's a, a life cycle event. And this gets called when my app is um, starting up. So before it gets displayed on the screen, I need to actually set the content. Um, and this is how we reference the view that I was defining. So this r.layout.activity main is just going to load up the file in this resource directory, r for res layout activity main. And so after that gets loaded, I can write some code. Now, uh, this is most Android apps now are written in Kotlin, uh, which is the language I'll be using. Um, so uh, I, unfortunately, I actually don't have a link to Kotlin, which would have been nice. Um, but that's at kotlinlang.org. Um, and you can look at the documentation for this. But if you've ever written in Java, um, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, probably a, a little bit easier, but I suggest that you start with the um, four links uh, here in the Kotlin documentation, which they say is a good place to start. Um, so this will just tell you how to run um, or type some code. So this is an excellent resource. Uh, for learning Kotlin, if you ever are confused about something. So, um, so if I jump back here, now if I want to handle that button click, um, what's kind of nice is that um, Android will uh, synthesize some variables for me. So if I try to reference my button by typing the ID of it, um, I can import this. Um, I type the button and then uh, let Android Studio think about it a minute. Um, it's going to suggest that I import a button uh, reference here in this package, Kotlin X Android Synthetic. And so if I, if I actually import it um, by typing Alt-Enter, then it will import that. So it's, it's actually going to load up every ID that I define in activity main. It's going to create a reference to that UI element. So this, this variable now, the button, is a actual button. So if I type a dot, I get all of these methods that are available for clicking on a button. Um, and the most important one here is this set click listener. So um, this is nice. Um, this will this block of code uh, will get called when my click list when my button is clicked. So, um, so let's just log something for now to see that it's working. Um, 
So I'm going to use the built-in logger in Android apps, Android util.log. I'm going to import that and we'll log something. So this takes two, two arguments. The first one is just a tag. We'll just say main activity. And the second one is whatever we want to log. So I'll just say the button was clicked. So that should, that should work. We'll run it. So now um, we can click on the button. Now it doesn't actually do anything uh, on the screen because it's just logging this. And the way you can view the logs is uh, in Android Studio, we can jump down here to um, the log cat um, menu or item here in the toolbar down at the bottom. Um, and this is now going to give us the logs from our application. So if I click the button, um, let me let me clear it and restart it. Um, sometimes it can give you a little bit of overload here with what it's logging. Um, but here we can see I just clicked it three times and here is my log message. So um, this, is, this is pretty nice. So the basic idea would be to set up some UI elements um, in your app by defining them in the XML file, set up a click listener and, um, and then handle the event. So in this case, we're logging something, but you might want to you know, make a network request and fetch something from an API or you know, do whatever you want inside of this um, click listener. So that is, um, so that's the basics of how to sort of set up a um, user interface um, and then handle events um, in the app. Um, the, uh, the basic UI elements that I'm going to use in my um, sample app are linear layout, uh, text views. Uh, text view is uh, what you can see here in this hello world. Um, I don't have any buttons in my um, sample app, so I don't have any buttons, but we just saw an example of a button. Um, and then I'm going to also use a more, a much more complex view called a recycler view, which will display a list. I'm going to provide all the code for this. So you don't have to really worry about how it works, um, but it does give us the opportunity to display a list. Otherwise, we're just stuck with simple uh, te text views. Um, the uh, the linear layout here is probably the easiest one um, to lay out. Um, elements on, on your screen. The layout that is the default now is this constraint layout, which like I said, if, if you for some reason forget to um, put one of these constraints um, in your app and you sort of drag this button where you think it's on the, in the middle of the screen here and I run it, um, it most likely won't end up there when you actually run the app. Um, so here you can see, though it looks like it's in the middle, since I didn't put any left to right constraints, it ends up all the way to the left. Um, so uh, this constraint layout it tends to be a little, um, a little more difficult in my mind to um, display a, a view. So I'm going to use a linear layout. It's, it's much simpler. So these are all linked here. Uh, if you need to, um, you know, get reference to the details of how to use any of these elements. Um, the folder structure of the app um, is uh, pretty simple. Um, well, it's not simple, but it, uh, if we only focus on a, a few parts of it, it, it can be simple. So all of your code goes in this Java folder, even though we're using Kotlin, it's going to be in this Java folder. All of your resources are in this res directory. And those really are the only two directories that we are going to concern ourselves with today. And um, the, uh, the only other one would be this manifest file, which we might touch upon if needed today. Um, I already talked about those resources. Um, we are not going <laughs> to discuss today um, various things that make our apps in our lives much more complicated. So uh, we're not going to we're not going to rotate our apps. I've actually um, 
I'll, I'll rotate the screen here um, on the emulator, which is a common thing. Um, but I've, I've prevented the app from actually rotating. So this will simplify our lives. I, I don't suggest it in a, a real app, but um, we're not going to concern ourselves with that. It complicates things way too much. Uh, we're only going to have one screen, one activity. So that's simple. Um, I'm not going to talk about fragments. I'm not going to talk about databases. We won't be using those. So um, these are things that should be in real apps, but um, we're not going to have it in our apps today. So let me uh, let me talk about what the app, uh, how the app's going to be constructed, and, and then I'm going to sort of step through um, piece by piece. I've got it broken up into like seven parts, and, and I'll build out the app. So we'll see how that works. Um, so it's called H News. It's going to be a Hacker News uh, article fetcher. So if you've never been to um, Hacker News, it's news.ycombinator.com. Um, and there's an open API for this, which is uh, on their, their GitHub page. This is linked in my uh, project page for the app. Um, and it describes in detail like how to fetch things from the API. The only one that we really care about is the um, the, the first one, uh, which gets back this structure. Um, and I only care about the title of the article and the URL. Um, that's that's all we're going to be focused on today. So I just want to display that list, and I'm going to display it kind of kind of like the the website here it displays it. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we'll just display the top N stories, 10, 20 or so. Uh, you can click a link and open it in the browser. That's all it's going to do. Um, so there, there's other things that we could do to make it better, like make it, uh, make it prettier, maybe display some of the other elements in that API. Um, when you click on one, it would be nice to say, oh, you already looked at it, so don't click on it again. Um, it would be really cool if we could like add a search bar to search through it, but um, we're not going to do that. Um, so the components, like I said, um, we're going to have one activity, no rotation. We'll have a, a recycler view to display the list of um, results from the API. Um, we'll use an intent to actually launch a browser link. And I'm going to be using OKHTTP OK to make the REST call. But I've already coded this up, so you don't have to worry about how it actually works. Um, so let me, let me walk through it. We'll see if I can, uh, I can do this. Um, the actual project, um, this Git project, is split apart into steps. Um, oops. Um, yeah, so I've got step zero, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six, step seven. So um, these are each step along the way is like a finished part of the app. Um, and then I've tagged the finished app with a tag called finished app. So if anyone wanted to just jump to the finished app, they could just check out, um, uh, they could do a git checkout, oops, um, finished app like that. And that would check out the finished app and then you could run it and see the, the finished product. Um, you can do all this in Android Studio down in the lower um, right hand corner is um, some branch uh, yeah, or branching for the, uh, the project. Um, so uh, these can we can switch branches um, doing it uh, this way as well. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, I'm going to, I made some changes to the master branch, so I'm going to stash them and I'm going to check out step zero. Um, and let's see. Yeah. So I've already laid out the, uh, the, the, the basic layout here. Um, I've got a linear layout and then inside of it, I've got a progress bar, which is what you see on the screen. It's this like spinner. And then um, behind it, you can't really see it because it's hidden is a recycler. I'm going to use. So this is the basic elements. I just have two, um, two things that are filled the full screen. And then um, there's another file for the actual article view. So in the list, um, again, it's using one of those linear layouts. And um, I've got a text view to display like the position in the list. And then I'm displaying the article title and the article URL. So that's it. 
Now, all of the code for each of these steps is actually in a sample data folder in this code.conlin. So they're all here. I'm just going to sort of copy and paste out of there as I build the app. Um, so you, you can follow along without really having to type anything, which might be pretty fun. Um, so, uh, and then I also have these to do's um, that'll guide us through the parts. So there's, there's seven of them here. Um, so part one, um, part one, I'm going to uh, sort of create a, whoops, I'm going to click on Gradle over here, right click on H news and refresh Gradle dependencies. Um, this should rebuild my app and give me um, a reference to some of this other stuff here. Um, so part one, um, if we look at my sample code in this, this file here, um, I've got, uh, I'm gonna just copy out of here and paste over top of, oops. So uh, what I have here is a, uh, a, a list. So this is a, a list in Kotlin. Um, and I have a very simple class uh, for each news item. So I'm, I only care about the title and the URL. Um, and so if we wanted to, we could extend this class here. Um, but I'm going to have a list of them in my main activity that's going to be stored in news list. And then I've created some helper functions. Um, and, and for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete this override. We'll come back to that. Um, and I, I tentatively created this interface that's just going to show like what is our main activity going to do. We're going to be able to get a count of all the news items that we download. We're going to get a, a news item by position. And then we'll be able to show an article. So that's what these do. I have this list. Um, the news count function just returns the size of that list and the news item function itself just returns the news item at the position that I give it. So that's all it does. So this is, this is our data. Uh, we're just going to store everything here. Um, and that is, um, you know, that's going to be, that's our part one here. So part two, um, once we have that data there, uh, we can um, jump over to this other file um, where I have this news adapter file. We're gonna we're gonna have two things in here. One is a view folder. We need that for the list, um, and then we need an adapter, which I've got a bunch of code for that. This is probably the most complicated part, but it's all given to you. And, and if you want to scan through it, um, you you can. I'll briefly talk about how it works. Um, so I'm going to paste in part two. I'll, I'll talk about it uh, briefly. Uh, that's a news adapter. We'll just paste over top of that. And so the purpose of this is that um, we're using this class called Recycler View, and this is a, this is a view holder. And basically, all it's going to do we pass in a, a view, and we just want to grab. And this view actually is that news item view this one. So this has three things in it. It's got a position text view. There we go. It's got an article title text view and an article URL. So the URLs in, in like blue underneath, there's a text view above it. And then off to the side, there is a position. So I'm just going to display the position in the list, the article title and the article URL. And so this news view holder is just going to take in that view and then pull out those UI elements, this text view, this text view, and this position text view. And all of these properties are those IDs that I gave it in the news item file. So each of these have an ID, uh, position, article title, article URL. And that's, the, that's all this class is supposed to do, is hold on to those views. Um, so if we jump back to part three, this is the scariest part, um, but I've already coded it up. Um, this is the adapter. This is going to, um, this is probably the most important part, um, but it um, is, um, you know, it is 
uh, going to display and handle displaying each item in the list. Um, actually, we need to add this show article method. I, I forgot about that in main activity. So I'm going to, um, there is uh, this show article I need to actually implement here. So function show article. Uh, this is going to get called when we click on a link. We'll do that. That was simple. And so uh, basically what this is going to do, and I, and I have a slide that sort of shows what each of these pieces do. Um, so this is the recycler view adapter, this news adapter. And the three most important parts of it are this method on create view holder, this override item count, and this on bind view holder. Those are, those are it. And, and they're just supposed to create the view for the row. They're supposed to populate the data and then tell it how many items there are. Um, and this line is just loading up the view. That's all that does. Um, the, the next part is just creating our view holder that I was just talking about. That's, that's all that is. Um, and then I'm going to set up a click listener. And this is the important part where I take the click. So I'm going to click on the article URL. And I'm going to just go back to the activity and say, go ahead and show that article. We'll, we'll run the code in there. And that's all that does. Um, and then this on bind view holder is probably the, the next most important part. This is where I get the news item from my uh, activity. And then I grab the title, the URL, and the position position I just grabbed from the, uh, the argument here. Um, and this, just, this, is, this is what's going to be displayed in the list. So that's what that does. Um, and um, yeah, so we, we'll move on then. Um, so the next part is actually like loading up that adapter. Um, so this is really important. Um, in main activity, anything we want to do when the app starts, we would do in on create. So um, this part four is where we're going to set up that recycler view. And so all we're doing here is creating that adapter. So we're instantiating that. Forgot to mention in Kotlin, you don't use the new keyword. So this is actually a constructor creation here. Um, so I create the adapter. Um, I'm actually passing it the activity. Uh, if you were attentive, you would see that I'm passing in main activity. Um, this isn't uh, the ideal way to do this, but it, it works. So we'll just pass in the activity. That way I can call these functions, show article, get the news count, and get the news item. So, um, so I create it, and then I have to tell the recycler view. This, this recycler view is in my main activity. Main activity here, right there. You can't see it because the progress bar is there, but it's, it's there. So I have to tell it back in main activity, I have to tell it what's the adapter and how do I lay it out? Um, I'm just using this linear layout manager, which displays it in a vertical list. That's it. Um, so this would work. Actually, if I run it, um, I believe I'm just going to see this spinning, uh, spinning progress bar, because that's the only thing that gets displayed, because I don't have any data yet to actually populate my list. So. So the goal now in this next step is actually to call out to the Hacker News API, download the data, turn it into a list of these news item objects, and then tell my app, hey, I have data. Stop displaying this progress bar. Display the list. So that's the, uh, the next step here. So let's, let's do that. Now, um, I have a class for creating um, the API call, this Hacker News API. Um, there's some already some helper um, code in here. Um, there is a, a we're going to use OKHTTP OK client. So I have a, a reference to that. I'm going to use JSON to deserialize the JSON result. Um, but I will copy my code. Um, I have a fetch news function and a fetch news item function. Um, this is kind of interesting. 
um, I'm going to paste it right in here in this to do part five. Um, the way this works, if we look at the API, uh, hacker news API, um, we are going to um, call, well, if, if we look at the first API um, endpoint, you see there's an example, it's at this slash item, and then you get the item ID, um, which is great if you know the item ID, but how do we get the item IDs? <laughs> and so if you scroll down a little further, you can see that there's an example of, oh, getting the top stories, right? So this is, this is our first call. We're actually gonna call the top stories API uh, endpoint. And that gives us a big list of uh, IDs. So we're just going to call this. Um, we're going to grab like the first 20 or so. And then we'll have to call for each of those. We'll sort of have to loop through them and then call this one, or not that one, the, uh, the item API, this item with the ID. So we just get the IDs. We'll get a list of them, grab the top 20, loop through them and grab the full list. So there's, that's why there's two API calls in the code. So in the code here, we've got, um, oh yeah, so it, right now I have these overrides. This is just because I define this interface. Um, I'll add the interface. That way Kotlin will be happy. Um, and so the, the, the code here just follows exactly what I was just saying. I'm gonna call the top stories API um, the uh, code for doing that is uh, in line 25. I build up a request, I make a call. Um, and then the next line here is actually just uh, de deserializing uh, the result, which is going to be a list of integers, one, two, three, four, and so on. These are the top stories. Um, I put them in a list and then um, and then I'm going to loop over that list. That's what this for each is. Um, I'm only going to take the, the number of results that I've defined in this uh, constant up here. So if you want 40, you can put 40. Um, if you want all of them, you can put 100 or so. Um, and so I just loop over that and then fetch each news item individually, which is just that other function call. So here you can see that I'm fetching by ID. So I pass in the ID. I do another request builder where I build up the request, pass in the ID, and then basic same steps. Make the actual call, um, deserialize it into a news item, and then return that news item. And, and then I just stick it in a list. That's basically it. And this could either be successful or fail. So I've got this, uh, I'm using another third-party library to indicate either a string, that's an error, or a list of items, which is my success. All right. So we want to actually call that. I've got this private helper function that's already there, fetch news. It doesn't do anything right now. So we'll just we'll just call um, the API. Um, so I'm going to grab that code from uh, this part six here. Um, so an interesting thing with part six is um, I need to do this in a background thread. So unfortunately, to do anything interesting in Android, you got to do things. Um, oops, I've got, a, I've got a little helper function. I'll, I'll talk about that. Um, you have to worry about threading uh, because um, Android won't let you make this API call, this fetch news. Um, because it calls out to a network, it won't let us do that. It will throw an exception. Um, I'll, I'll show you that by commenting out this scope stuff. Um, and we'll, we'll see that this, this should crash. Um, it'll actually crash for two reasons. Um, I'll crash it one way and then I'll crash it another way. Um, so here I get error fetching news. Um, and why did it, why did it fail? Um, if I um, run it in debug mode, this is always helpful too. put a breakpoint in the exception. 
um, and then click on the bug in Android Studio. This will launch it in debug mode. This should eventually get called and I'll just take a look at what my exception is. Um, here actually you can see it, it says network on main thread. So I, I have to do it on a background thread. So, um, so I'm gonna just stop that. So I, I have to make that network call on a background thread and that's why there is that extra code. It uses um, coroutines, which are not going to be talked about. Um, just know that I'm going to launch this on a background thread, which is this IO dispatcher. And then I'm going to update my list in the main thread. Um, and the basic idea here is that I'm just going to call that fetch news API call. I get my items. I then fill my list and then tell my recycler review, hey, something changed. And then I've got this helper function that just says, hey, hide the progress bar displayed list. Um, in order to make this network call, I have to open up my Android manifest and I need to actually, um, well, let's just run it real quick. We'll see that it should also fail again. There, so error fetching news. Um, why did it fail? We can again put a breakpoint in my API call, start it up in debug mode. It should tell us a different reason why it failed. Um, it should be a permission error. Yep, permission denied. So here you can see permission denied. I need to ask for permission to, to do anything. So if your app does anything um, that's um, you know, inherently insecure, like calling out to a network, um, then you have to let your users know and you have to let the system know. So we need to actually add this uses permission, Android permission internet. So we only need this because I'm calling um, that API. So once we have that, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm actually gonna uninstall the app. So we can open up the emulator um, long press on the app and drag it up to uninstall. This is just going to guarantee that it, it updates that permission. So I'm going to rerun it and it should, there we go. All right. So we fetched our articles. Cool. Now uh, clicking doesn't do anything. Um, so that's the final step. Um, but it does, uh, display everything, which is pretty cool. Um, We've got the top 20 stories here. So the, the last step here would be to fill in that empty show article method, um, which is, yeah, part seven. So um, I've got the code for that. The, the code's fairly simple um, in the, uh, the code part here, part seven. Um, I'm going to paste that into the show article method. And basically all we're going to do, we're given the position, right? So when I click on it, the click happens in the adapter. So if I jump to the adapter, we can see when I click on it right here, I'm going to get the position and pass it and call show article with the position. So if I click on, you know, number three, it'll pass in position two. Um, and in main activity, I'm going to grab the item from my list. Uh, I'm going to grab the URL from it. Um, I have to turn it into a URI. So I do a URI.parse. Um, this could fail, so I should probably put it in a try catch, but I'm going to assume Hacker News API is providing correct URLs. Um, and then I'm going to create an intent. And the important part here, if you, if you look at the documentation for the intent, um, common intents that I was talking about earlier, if you want to open up um, the web browser, then you need to use the action view. And then you have to give it a URL that's of HTTP or HTTPS. And we're going to put it in, um, in, or we're just going to pass it along with the intent. So um, that's where, that's what I do. I just pass that URI. And then you call start activity. And what this is going to do, it's actually going to start that um, the web browser. And it depends if you have multiple web browsers, it'll let you choose. So this should be just enough for us to be able to click on the link now 
and it should launch the web browser. And since I have Android or the Google Play services, it should open this in Google Chrome. Um, so let's pick a nice article here. Um, Black hole information paradox comes to an end. Sounds fun. Um, and here we go, wired. So we got our, uh, our articles uh, linked and uh, the links are working. So pretty cool. All right. And the great thing about this is that, you know, I, I don't have to display or handle actually displaying the links. I'm just offloading that to another app that knows exactly how to display like, like the web browser. Um, and yeah, so that is our, uh, our working app. Um, and we sort of went through a handful of the important parts of, you know, what makes an Android app. Um, and there's, uh, you know, a bunch of other things that we, I didn't cover, but, um, you know, that's, uh, that's the, the basics of it. Um, I don't think there's enough people here to ask any questions, um, but, um, you know, I don't, we, what it's, yeah, we, we took up about an hour. I don't know, uh. Emily, if, if we want to go any further or if that's uh, sufficient, um, I, uh, I always like uh, extending this. I would love this to look a little prettier. Um, I think another thing that we could do here is like this, this API has like a bunch of other stuff like, um, you know, descendant links and a score and we could display that stuff in, in the app. So there's a little extensions that you could do um, to make this and we could change colors and so on to make it look prettier, but um, yeah. And so that this, uh, the final, like I said, the final version of that, um, if we wanted to uh, look at it would be um, in the repository, if you just check out the finished app. Um, and then if you wanted to like jump to a particular um, step along the way, you could check out that step as well. Just like just jump into step four. You could just check out step four branch. So that, uh, that is the uh, content that I had prepared.